Okay, here's a basic overview of a different drummer and it's a rather expensive program and a lot of people are wondering if it's worth the money and there isn't much information about how it actually works and what it does and that might help you in deciding whether or not you want it and I went ahead and bought it and I, I, I like it a lot let me tell you how it works you can adjust various parameters such as the pitch of the notes that are produced within a measure they will follow a waveform you can adjust their uh, timing their connection to each other the volume and the pan of this many different kinds of instruments say a snare drum and a, a any kind of like a synthesizer, any various sounds. There's lots of sounds to choose from here. Um, choosing a normal kick for our demonstration for the first parameter. So right now I only have this parameter set and I'm going to start playing it. Now one problem that there is is that it should be making sound now. Everything's set to zero and it should be making sounds at a quarter time it should be four beats one two three four but quite often when you start it nothing happens so I really don't know it seems like it's random what you gotta do to get this thing started so if you just fiddle around with little controls like that you can get something going you shouldn't have to do that though the uh, so what it's doing right now is I'm adjusting the pitch and over the measure of, over this one measure, there are four beats as is dictated by this quarter, tone, quarter note here. And it's going to follow the pitch and this parameter is F. It simply means it goes through one cycle within the space of one measure. The degree that you adjust here is how high in pitch it goes and how low in pitch it goes. So this is one complete cycle for F. The next one down is 2F, so that means it's going two cycles within one measure. If I want more notes to sound in that measure, I simply increase, let's just say here, to an eighth. So now I have eight beats. And as you can hear, it's following the pitch eight times, up and down, up and down. Be nice if there was a playhead bar here, I think. It also adjusts on the half. So within one measure, it only goes through half a cycle. And you can zoom out on the measures like that. So now this is showing four measures. So as I, this is a single F, and you can combine them. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So I'm not, now I'm showing two measures at eighth notes. So you can combine them. I can combine two F with one F and get something like this. You can change the instrument. There are quite a bit here. Instruments that you can you can uh, choose. Let's see here. Let's get a different. Uh... How about a tom? How about a conga? Bongo? Cowbell? Can't have enough cowbells. Uh, they have a kind of a synthesizer which will more closely show how the notes are going. Sitar. So let's stick with the normal kick for now and back to the, the uh, a simple modification of in one bar it's doing one full cycle at the maximum 
high pitch and low pitch throughout that cycle. Let's just zoom in on one, one measure, eight beats in that measure. The next thing you can modify is the, the rests. And this will just make it Now it's resting during half of the measure. I can do that on the, I can divide the measure in half along this waveform and make it rest there and there, but it's sounding there and there. I can do something like that. And this would be a good time to introduce the different kinds of, of waves you can have. You can get a more of a square wave here which is more of an abrupt change. You can get this kind of a sawtooth wave here and you can get this kind of a sawtooth wave here. Now this set of buttons and this set of buttons do the same thing so I can go back here I could go here. Let's go back to here and let's turn off the, the rest pause. Now it's just going to be a straight instead of a curve it's just going to go straight across and down. Of course, if you modify these, you get more variation and closer, actually, to if you just use this. Um, the next thing, throw in a couple spaces in there. Divide it by three, divide it by four. Let's go to the ties. Now, honestly, this is difficult for me to use. Somebody who's more uh, technically musically inclined would understand this more than I do. But it it seems to, if I can do it, seems to tie them in in less of a regular pattern. And remember, folks, this is being recorded, but it is being recorded live. If you hit zero, it will zero out the parameters just for this measure, but I have uh, successfully gotten it not to make a sound. Okay, so sometimes I don't really understand, actually, the tying. When I do make it work, it's less consistent in this... Dun, dun, dun. It's a little bit of variety when I can make it work. I'm still struggling with some aspects of this. Here is pan, which we won't be able to hear because I'm recording this with my camera and the iPod, uh, iPad only has uh, one speaker, so we won't be able to record that, but you can get pan uh, effects pretty nicely like this. Here it would be right and left following whatever waveform you wanted. You can make some interesting uh, ideas. And this is, of course, uh, volume. You can change the volume of things. Probably hard to pick up. I mean, I have the um, iPad on its maximum volume as it is right now, and it's really not that loud. If anybody knows a good way to record the screen on an iPad, like I see so many uh, YouTube videos make, I really would like to I uh, know about it. Uh, and that's uh, the very basics of how it works. You can turn on and turn off individual instruments like this. And this, of course, is a different instrument. I could turn them both on at the same time. Like I say, sometimes you got to kick start. Uh, these uh, these these things sound honestly so I do find it a little bit of a struggle I should be hearing the the kick drum right now see and I'm hearing it so sometimes it's I find it inconsistent and for me it's you know my ineptitude I suppose I I have to do random things in order to make it work 
Now you hear both of them working together. I think this is too loud, so I'm going to affect Y here. Down here, the Y just affects the thing, the volume, or the parameter without any curving. It just affects it as a whole. So I think it's a little bit loud. So I go there. Let's give it a little bit more interest. Let's give it a little, let's just speed it up. if we can get this tying to work. So I hope you weren't expecting any great uh, rhythmic examples here, but this is more a demonstration of what can be done with it. Let's, let's try the next instrument. Of course you can set all the instruments to what you want. This is just a, probably a rim shot here. Let's go back to uh, adjusting its tone. I think it's a little bit uh, low in volume. Let's increase the volume. Oops. on on something else. And that's basically how it works. They have some randomization sections here. They have uh, a lot of existing instruments here. You can change the scale that you want to work in. Uh, they have some automation here, uh, which I don't really understand. Um, I'm thinking that it, well, it does randomize within what it's doing right now, but I haven't experimented with that much yet. So you could get something like the stochastic drum thing going, I believe, here. In, in a sense, um, this, this simply adjusts this note here. And that's it. I think it, it's worth it. I, I enjoy it. It's a, it's a new way to make uh, rhythms. Lots of, lots of variety you can make. And uh, it's interesting and fun. And if you take this and you run it through something like Jam or Jam Up or, uh, or um, uh, Tornado, because this is Audio Bus, thankfully, and I'm very glad that they made it. Uh, Landscape mode, that's great. Uh, run it through something like Tornado or Jam Up, and it's uh, it, or N Log Synthesizer is a great way to make real time modifications to the sound, and uh, it will it will uh, it will um, make some interesting recordings for you. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it's it's hard to lay down that kind of money. It's, this, this is the money that, that Aria would cost you. Or, uh, basically, it's about as expensive as apps get, even at its lower price now, as compared to its original uh, really high price. So, I hope that you enjoyed that, and simple demonstration of how this thing works.